Let's do a drug scheduling. All right. Let's 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 talk about some drugs. Sure. Um, so just like a real like basic history on this is so uh, during the '60s, Lyndon Bain Johnson, uh, the Economic Impact Act came and and. He, it was called the, the war on poverty. So that's where a lot of um, programs came in that, that we still see today, like Head Start is a big one. That's a program uh, of, of like free preschool uh, aimed at low income uh, kids. Uh, Job Corps is a really big one that came out of this. Uh, different social agency programs um, that, that were instituted to try to provide economic opportunities for people. Um, fa fast forward to uh, the 70s, uh, Richard Nixon states that that drugs are are the number one threat in this country. Um, that kind of creates the basis for this for this war on drugs. And then when you have uh, Reagan come in 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 the eighties, um, you have the the whole pushback against the LBJ sort of war on poverty situation. Uh, you had the 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 negative imagery of like the welfare queen, you know, the the inner city black woman that's driving around your Cadillac with all of her kids. Um, and, and so you see like a real hardening into this, this war on drugs mentality, even straight up, like, you know, most first ladies have their little things, you know, for Nancy Reagan, it was the just say no thing for, for drugs. Um, it was really just a very like cultural moment. And so the United States Drug Enforcement Administration, it's, um, it's, it's part of the U.S. Department of Justice, and it is the, the law enforcement agency that is tasked with this war on drugs um so they have this thing called the the controlled substance act and, and it makes these these drug schedules uh drug scheduling is uh what they basically use to 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 um divide up psychoactive substances in, into what they find to be uh, most dangerous. The, the big thing here is that the, the problem is, is not only is the DEA, it's a law enforcement agency. It's basically a police agency. Uh, it's not a scientific agency. It's not an agency that has any kind of like civilian, um, severe, serious civilian questioning, no, no like civilian review boards. There's not like academics here. So this is a law enforcement agency telling you what what substances are 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 valid, are are used medically, are dangerous, or whatnot. These are not doctors. These are, these are cops. Um, You're telling so doctors. They are telling doctors, like, for example, any provider, be, be that a physician, a nurse practitioner, a physician assistant, anybody that can prescribe, also veterinarians, dentists, they need to register with the DEA. So if you look at a prescription, you'll, you'll see your doctor's DEA number. That's a number that they have to get from the DEA. If the DEA takes away their, their number for any reason, which they can, because they, they, they routinely um, audit these doctors, um, they can no longer practice medicine. Um, so the, the schedule goes from, um, from one uh, to, to five, um, basically schedule one drugs, they, they say high potential for abuse, no medical use. Um, the, the joke of this is you'll see still on schedule one, it has not changed is cannabis, uh, marijuana. It is legal in Massachusetts recreationally and medically. It is legal medically almost everywhere in this country and, and recreational is coming soon. This says that, that cannabis has, uh, no currently accepted medical use and a high potential for abuse. That is just not true. <laughs> um, so that, that's a joke in itself. Uh, right down to schedule two, it's high potential for abuse, but potential um, potential medical use. So for example, schedule two uh, has, has fentanyl. Uh, fent fentanyl, it is in the medical context, uh, useful for, for uh, end, end term uh, cancer patients, uh, people that are, that are uh, towards the end of life and require a high level of pain control in the medical setting, fentanyl is used, but they're, they're basically the DEA are telling you that that cannabis is, is more dangerous than fentanyl, which it's, it's, it's really, uh, it's quite, it's, it's quite funny. Um, and then just down, down the further down schedule that you go, um, the, the less, um, so dangerous. Schedule three has like use. steroids on there. Yeah. So like another funny Coding. thing is, is, so if you get onto schedule four, 
you can see Xanax and uh, Valium and Ativan. So those are benzodiazepines. Benzodiazepines have a similar action to alcohol. Um, I've, I've worked in the mental health field before, and I can tell you that, that the two physically hardest um, things to, to, to come off of and to go sober from are alcohol and benzodiazepines. It's, it's not heroin. It's not opioids. It is alcohol and benzodiazepines because when you have somebody that um, has a real like tolerance and addiction to this, when they, when they suddenly stop, they go into this thing called delirium tremens where they have hallucinations and severe seizures and need to be medically, uh, medically brought down. Uh, so the, the, the key here is that these, these schedules, this war on drugs is not based on science. It's based off of fear mongering and control from the government police officers and, and, and federal law enforcement. And, and so I, I think as, as society, we need to realize that this is basically antiquated. This is ancient. This is not up with science and we need to evolve past that this very kind of, um, draconian and, and old school thinking one thing i'm you know noticing is like you've got oxycontin oxycontin on uh on schedule two yeah um you know below uh, below cannabis and in ecstasy and these things yep and you know i'm just struck by in terms of the the enforcement, you know, if you look what what happened in the, in the this whole OxyContin scandal and the overdoses and and all that stuff, how how little that was enforced, how how easy it was for for big pharma to 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 get it all out there and using doctors, you know, and getting it prescribed, getting this whole illusion of oh no, it's not that dangerous, not that addictive. You know, and then you know, comparing that to um, uh, to marijuana and just how how that's been, um, of course, you know, so demonized historically, and how how it was just so so leveraged to um, you know to, to incarcerate a, a yep. whole lot of people, and specifically people of color. Yeah, so you're right that OxyContin mm. was um, it was marketed as uh, non addictive. It was they were they, the the just big like pharma, cigarettes were uh, yeah. healthy. <laughs> big, big pharma told uh, medical providers that that was non addictive. Do you, do you also and didn't they really they 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 keep did, didn't they do this thing where they keep selling whatever the newest painkiller um, that to come down the pike that they have the new patent on and they can make money on you know that's that's the new good one and that the the old one yeah we had problems with that one but this one is the good one. And they, I think they've rolled that, that trick around a few times. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Basically whenever they run out of their patent, what, what you describe happens also just the, I, I think that we've kind of uh, talked about this, this enough with the big thing of, of the, that, that, you know, this is ridiculous. This, this should be mm -hmm. uh, legalized um, harm, harm reduction saves lives. Legalization saves lives. But also do you, do you know the story behind the term marijuana? Well, do tell. Okay. So, um, basically like back in the 1920s, thirties, there was that, there was that famous movie, which now it's answering stupid, like reefer madness. Mm -hmm. And it was, um, put out there by like the likes of like J Edgar Hoover as, as this thing that was, you know, ruining Good young man. minds. And Good then of man, course, Hoover, like right? going into, it was, it was something that draft dodgers used and stuff like that. So marijuana is a made up word. Yeah, cannabis is the more accurate word. Basically, marijuana is a word that they came up with, and I'm not kidding here, to make it sound scary and Mexican. It's it's like it's like it's like a fake Spanish word. And that was that was that was part of the thing is the scary Mexican weed, marijuana. It's a completely made up word. All right, should we? Here we go. I, sure. Yes. Ready for some reefer madness? Yeah. I have received a letter of vital importance right. from a member of the Narcotics Bureau. The suppression of the use of marijuana and of the forces lurking behind Good it people. are the most important jobs this department is now engaged in. Is that some marijuana cigarettes? In this case, cigarettes? the trial of the defendant, Ralph White. It is convinced that he is hopelessly and incurably in Spain, a condition caused by the drug marijuana to which he was addicted. Under the influence of the drug, he killed his entire family with an axe. Shut up, shut up! Bring me some reefers. 
Let's go, Jack. I'm red hot. Oh, another victim of the Yeah, I mean it's, it's that was that was good. That was awesome, man. I wish she was yeah. playing. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. They do, they do they do say that it it's a boost to, to creativity. I mean, some some of some of your your favorite music was undoubtedly brought brought by marijuana. <laughs> well, I mean, that makes us think of uh, of Bill Hicks, and he has, Hicks. has part of that in one of his um, one of his great routines where. You know, he's, 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 I think he says, like, like think of all your, your favorite songs and your favorite, you know, rock and roll artists. And, you know, you get rid of the drugs, that's gone. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> all right. So, yeah, so that's a pretty, you know, the, mar the mar whole marijuana one. It's such low hang hanging fruit. And it's just so incredible that it's, um, that it's still on on the schedule i mean it's biden any of these presidents could do that with a stroke of the pen i mean why do, why do you think trump trump never did it it could have, it would have gotten him a it, that probably would have gotten him reelected. <laughs> I, I think at the end of the day it's because he's a capitalist and because there still is just so all much the money influence from big pharma i i think that that is the last bastion um, that, that is stopping the legalization movement when it comes to substances like psychoactive substances is big pharma. Same thing with, um, some of the psychedelics, uh, like LSD ketamine therapy is a new thing where, where they use low doses of ketamine to treat, uh, medication resistant depression, um, psilocybin mushrooms, uh, those kind of psychedelics, there, there's a push, um, to do psychedelic therapy in which you have very, um, short term, like a lot of times it's just between six and 10 sessions. You have a physician, a doctor, like an MD that prescribes the medicine. Um, there's a nurse and during the, the, the therapy sessions, there's a nurse that administers a trained nurse, especially trained nurse that administers the psychedelics. And there are two master's level clinicians, like therapists that work the, work the, work with the person when they're they're under this substance and do this therapy um a lot of research going into that now a lot of good research a lot of a lot of indications that it could be seriously helpful now here is the rub is that these therapies with the with the psychedelic drugs are designed to be closed loop they are designed to be a series of six to ten sessions at which point after that the the patient no longer requires treatment Mm. Um, where's that, the money in that? Exactly. Big Pharma <laughs> does not like that because the way that mental health care happens right now is therapy is a never ending process. You can go to therapy forever. And also you can be on antidepressants forever. You can be on mood stabilizers forever. That is the model is that you will always be on these drugs. If you have a, if you have a diagnosed mental health issue and, and Big Pharma would like to keep it that way. And just to be clear, we're not saying that that should never happen. You know, mm -hmm. these these treatments certainly do do help a lot of people. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I take but, I take medication. I'm I'm not against it, but uh, but you need to think about the um, the you need to think about the fi the financial aspects that keep legalization from happening. It's it's not scientific. It's not academic. That's for sure. And when we leave it just up to big pharma. Um, and the the profit motives, you know, these these are the answers they come up with. You know, these yeah. these are the treatments they they come up with. Definitely. <laughs>